Hello all, welcome to the portal, an Affinity Photo editing tutorial. If you would like to follow along with this tutorial, then please feel free to download the companion project file. The link will be in the YouTube description. If we're all set, let's get on with it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is add a vignette filter to kick off the dark and moody look. Click on the Live Filters icon and then select Vignette Filter from the menu. Now bring the exposure all the way down so the edges are almost black. And use the Hardness slider to create a nice soft transition. I think about there will do. Now use this scale to move the vignette towards the edges of the screen. I don't want the vignette to be as focused in the centre. Lower the shape slider to make the shape of the vignette more oval to more match the rectangular scene. And that's fine. We're done with the vignette filter. Let's go on to the next stage. I'll just move the vignette filter above the background in the layers as uh, it nests them by default, though this behavior can be changed with settings. Okay, I'm going to add a brightness contrast adjustment, which I'm going to use to make the center of the scene brighter. I'll move the brightness and contrast adjustment below the vignette in the layers so that the vignette isn't affected by the brightness and contrast. Well, not so much anyway. I just want to add a little brightness to the scene, so I'm going to increase the brightness slider by about 24%. Okay, that's fine. Very good. That's a nice base to start from. Time to play with saturation. Make sure the top layer is selected. Select the HSL adjustment, like so. I want to bring down the saturation dramatically overall so that I can add it back again in targeted colors in a moment. At the moment, this drop down menu says master, which means we've just used the master control to desaturate all of the colors. Next, we're going to select specific colors to saturate. We're going to use just red and green. Pop down the list and select the reds. Add just over 50% saturation. Okay, uh, there. That's fine. And use the hue slider to shift the reds more towards brown. Just about there. Okay, I'm going to move on to greens. And I'll increase the saturation of the greens all the way to the top. And we're done with the HSL or Hue Saturation and Luminance adjustment. Time to add a bit of the old uh, orange and teal look. I think it will really suit this image. A really quick way to achieve this classic look is to use the channel mixer. So that's what I'm going to do. Select the channel mixer adjustment. There we go. All we need to do is enter three numbers into the blue channel. It really is that simple. Select the blue channel. Set red to minus 50. Set green to plus 150. And set blue to zero. Voila, orange and teal. I do think this orange and teal effect is a little extreme at the moment, so let's bring it down a bit using the opacity slider. There we go, down, up, 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 fine. 
Well, I think we're making good progress. The next part will add a lot of drama to the image. We're going to use the Shadows and Highlights Adjustment. So select Adjustments and then Shadows and Highlights. We're not going to use it in the standard way or normal way where it's most used, where you uh, increase the shadows and decrease the highlights. No, we're going to use it the other way around where we decrease the shadows and increase the highlights to add drama and detail, especially in the highlights. Starting with the shadows, we'll bring it down all the way. Look at that. That's added a ton of drama. And up with the highlights as far as it will go. All the way. Using the shadows highlight filtering this way has given us deep detailed shadows and bright detailed highlights. It's made the wall detail much, much more clear and added a grunginess to the scene. Though looking at it, I think it could do with a bit more. So I'm going to do the same effect all over again. Sometimes it's best to go overboard and then bring it back rather than not add enough in the first place and never know what it could look like. Down with the shadows, up with the highlights and bring down the opacity to about 11. Great. Now that really is dramatic. Let's close our shadows and highlights and get on with the next stage. It would be really cool to have the light in the tunnel glowing like some ethereal doorway into another dimension. To achieve this glowing doorway effect I'm going to use blend ranges. Blend ranges are a fantastic affinity photo feature that could be used for a multitude of effects. It's like uh, exposure masking on Photoshop but way more powerful and more simple to use. From the layers menu, let's create a brand new fill layer. Here we go, new fill layer. And make sure it's black by selecting black in the colors panel so that we will be able to see what we're doing later on. Now I'm moving the fill layer to the bottom of the layers so that I have a black background behind everything. Just like that, grab it and drag it to the bottom of everything and let go. The black background is now behind all of the other layers. Right, we're going to create a new top layer, which is all of the other layers merged together into one single layer. We start by right clicking on the top layer of the layers panel and selecting merge visible. Now we have a single layer at the top of the layer stack, which contains all of our adjustments. In Photoshop, this is known as a stamp layer. I'm going to turn off all of the layers apart from the black background we created earlier and our new merged layer so that I can properly see the effect of the blend range adjustment that I'm going to make. I'm clicking on the second from top layer and while holding shift, clicking on the second from bottom layer and then turning them off with the little box on the right. In fact, we could deselect any of the boxes on the selected layers and it would turn all of them off. OK, now click on the layer that we created earlier, the merge layer, and then click on the little cog in the panel above. This will bring up the blend range options for this layer. A full explanation of blend layers is a bit much for the scope of this tutorial but they basically allow you to reduce the opacity of a layer based on the layer's luminance. So for instance, as in this tutorial, we could reduce the opacity or visibility of just the dark colors of a layer while leaving the lighter colors fully visible. Let's move the panel out of the way so we can see our image while we're working on it. And now we're ready to bring down the visibility of the darker colours whilst leaving the lighter colours and whites fully visible. As I drag this point down, you can see the blacks and darker colours disappearing. 
and eventually we're left with just the whites and very light colours. This is why we created the black fill layer earlier so that we could see what we're doing while we're performing this operation. So now we have the doorway and the light bleeding from the doorway onto the walls visible. The next stage is to blur it. Make sure we have our darkened layer selected and then from the select menu pick selection from layer. This creates a selection based on the layer's luminance. The brighter parts of the selection will be more visible and the darker parts of the selection will be less visible. Make a copy of this selection by pressing Ctrl and C and then Ctrl and V. You now have a new layer with the doorway and its dark parts are invisible and its lighter parts are fully visible. Turn off our merged pixel layer and then turn off the selection with the little red slash icon. We've come quite far in this tutorial and uh, learned quite a bit I think. Just a few more steps and we'll have our finished image. Let's turn on our working layers and original background like so. Select the top layer which contains just our white doorway and go to Filters, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Cool, right away we can see the effect. Now just set it to something around 50-ish. Uh, we have our blurry door and a slight blur just around the doorway on the bricks. I think that looks really nice. Really effective. Click apply and let's just select the hand tool to get rid of the blue box. I do think the very brightest parts of the image are a little too bright so let's do something about that first. So let's select a live filter by clicking on this little icon just here. Then select the shadows highlight filter. Not to be confused with the shadows highlight adjustment layer that we used earlier, which is different. This has much more control. Increase the highlight strength just a small amount. This has the effect of reducing the brightest colours by just a little bit. Now just make sure our filter is at the top of the layer stack so that it affects everything underneath and finalise the highlight strength. I think that's perfect. And we're done. We've turned a nice little scene into the Puzzle of Doom. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this tutorial, then please give us a like or maybe even consider subscribing. Thank you. While we're here, let's compare the finished work to the original image. Here we go. Before, after, before, after, before, and after. We've done a really good job. A very effective image.